Kodiak, Alaska is not only home to brown bears and abundant fishing grounds, but also one of the most innovative power grids in the country. From Alaska Public Media, Rachel Waldholtz reports. Kodiak, Alaska is all about fish. From commercial fishermen to the island's four-legged residents, everyone depends on seafood. James Turner manages the Ocean Beauty Seafood Plant in Kodiak. The town's half-dozen processors serve the second busiest fishing port in the nation. This is a 24-hour plant, so we run round the clock. And this plant will run anywhere from 40 to 91 million pounds in a year. Processing all that fish takes a lot of power. And in Kodiak, all that power comes from renewable sources right here on the island. Kodiak decided to aim for nearly 100% renewable energy back in 2007. There was risk. There was engineering risk. There was construction risk. It was, it was taking a leap. Jennifer Rich Creek works for the Kodiak Electric Association, the local co-op that runs the community's power grid. A decade ago, the co-op had a problem the cost of diesel. Back in the 90s, Kodiak got just about all of its electricity from a hydro dam. But as demand increased, they had to use diesel generators more often. And diesel costs were going through the roof. We were burning millions of gallons of diesel oil. It was a very vulnerable position. Diesel is very expensive. Its price is very volatile. So the co-op decided to harness something Kodiak has a lot of wind. But wind isn't always easy to work with. Wind is a wild child. You don't know when the wind is going to blow. You don't know how long it's going to blow. It's that variability that communities across the country, large and small, are struggling with as they try to add more renewable energy to their grids. The way you deal with that is energy storage. Energy storage is the hot topic in renewable energy um, because of the variable nature of solar and wind. To be able to stabilize that, energy storage is huge. Kodiak's first solution was a bank of batteries. Wind can drop away in a moment, but it takes minutes for the hydropower to ramp up behind it. The batteries bridge that gap. They absorb excess power when the wind is blowing hard, then release that energy back into the grid as the wind drops. But just as engineers figured out how to balance wind and water, a new challenge was brewing over at the port. Our old crane was diesel powered. It was fairly small and it started breaking down quite a bit and made us very nervous that our ability to operate was, was in jeopardy. Rick Kenyajopski manages the Kodiak shipping terminal for the company Matson. So we'll go up to the elevator and then head up to the third floor. The company wanted to install a new, larger electric crane. That was a big ask. How do we supply that much power that fast while maintaining all of the other power quality factors throughout the grid to keep it stable? So. Um, took some time to think about it, modeled it out, and um, came to the decision that flywheel can do the job. Just like the batteries, it's a kind of energy storage. A flywheel is a massive piece of steel spinning in a frictionless vacuum chamber hovered by magnets. In practice, it works a bit like the braking system on an electric car. As the crane lifts the shipping crate, it draws a bunch of power from the grid, pulling energy from that spinning flywheel. But when that container is lowered back to the ground, the crane's braking system generates electricity. The flywheel stores nearly all the energy required to power the next lift. There are no grids this small that operate an electric crane, so this was kind of a leading edge. The result is a grid like nowhere else on the planet. And they've managed to do that while keeping electricity costs slightly lower than they were a decade ago. For Kodiak, that means a local source of power that isn't vulnerable to swings in the price of oil. Jennifer Rich Creek believes the lessons learned here could help communities around the globe. As renewables continue to grow and expand and displace fossil fuels, it will require a shift in infrastructure design and so we're collecting the data, we're modeling it, we're sharing it. Which might help other communities follow Kodiak to more than 99% renewable power. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Rachel Waldholtz in Kodiak, Alaska.